Welcome to an iGET Remote Sensing Concept Module. iGET Remote Sensing is a national science funded project to support remote sensing education. This three part module examines the concept and use of spatial filters in remote sensing. Part one introduces the idea of spatial frequency, the reasons for using filters, and the difference between high and low pass filters. Part two explains how filters work as well as the effects of simple high and low pass filters on an image. Part 3 provides review questions and answers for the concept module. On a very basic level, let's remember that the digital numbers associated with each pixel in a satellite image refers to the amount of electromagnetic radiation reflected from the Earth's surface after it passes back through the atmosphere and is picked up by a satellite sensor. These values range from 0 to 255 for images collected by Landsat satellites 1 through 7. For viewing purposes on the computer, brightness values are assigned a shade of gray that range from black with a brightness value of 0 to white with a brightness value of 255. So for Landsat satellites 1 through 7, there are 256 possible shades of gray. With the launch of the new operational land imager, or OLI sensor on Landsat 8, the range of values is from 0 to 4096, which means that there are many more possible shades of gray, resulting in it being easier to distinguish between features. Here you can see band 1 of a sample Landsat 5 thematic mapper image depicting the city of Tulsa in Oklahoma. If we were to zoom in to the pixel level, we would see the individual differences between pixels as expressed by their differing shades of black, white, and gray. These monochromatic differences correspond to the brightness values. If we were able to look at the actual digital numbers assigned to each pixel, we might observe a raster with numbers such as these, with each number representing the brightness value recorded by the satellite sensor. As you can see, each pixel has its own value assigned to it. To understand spatial filters in remote sensing, you have to have an understanding of the concept of spatial frequency, where spatial frequency is the number of changes in brightness values per unit distance for any particular part of an image. In this slide, the graphic on the left illustrates an example of low spatial frequency whereas the graphic on the right represents a high spatial frequency. Notice that the left graphic shows very small changes in gray tones across the geographic space depicted, whereas the graphic on the right depicts radical changes in black and white throughout the geographic space. Images can have very little change in their brightness values per unit distance and are considered to be low spatial frequency images or images can have lots of change in the brightness values per unit distance, in which case they are considered to have a high spatial frequency. Man-made objects such as roads and buildings can result in high spatial frequency, or natural objects such as faults, joints, and abrupt boundaries between land cover types can result in high spatial frequency. So what might this look like in an actual satellite image? Using the same band 1 Landsat thematic mapper image of the Tulsa regional area, we can focus on two different sections of the image where the spatial frequencies are different. The first section, which is outlined by the yellow circle, has a high spatial frequency. Notice that the changes in brightness values, as depicted by the varying shades of white, gray, and black, change rapidly within the circled area. The second section, outlined by the red circle, has a lower spatial frequency. Here, the differences between the shades of white, gray, and black are smaller, as are the differences in the underlying brightness values. Let's look a little more closely by zooming into the pixel level for each of these areas. We'll start with the area that has a high spatial frequency. On the right side of this slide, you should notice that brightness values represented by blacks, whites, and grays for each pixel change rapidly across the represented area. In contrast, on the left of this slide is the second area of the image which has a lower spatial frequency. Here the shades of gray for the pixels are much more homogeneous throughout the region. 
Many times, remote sensing analysts want to extract more information from the images they're working with through some type of image enhancement. Spatial filters are just one way images can be manipulated to extract more information. Filters work because they either suppress or enhance the brightness values of the original image. According to Nicholas Faust, there are three primary reasons filters are used. The first and second reasons are to improve the image for further analysis or to improve the image for some type of automated feature extraction. The third reason an analyst might use spatial filters is to remove or reduce satellite sensor degradation or noise. You've learned that spatial filters either enhance or suppress the image's brightness values. There are numerous ways in which this can be done. For the purposes of this concept module, we will focus on some simple filters. Some of these filters focus on enhancing the brightness values of the image, resulting in edge enhancement. These filters are referred to as high-pass filters. Other filters focus on suppressing the brightness values, leading to a smoothing effect on the image. Those filters are called low-pass filters. This concludes part one of the concept module for spatial filters. Additional resources, including part two and three of this module, and the PowerPoint formation without narration, can be found on the iGET remote sensing website at http colon forward slash forward slash iGET period delmar period edu.